Uh, first of all, I'd like to start by thanking uh, Julie um, for having me here. Uh, my name is Uchi Sharma. I am a senior staff scientist at NEI. I work with Kapil Bharti and our group is very much focused on uh, developing stem cell based therapies. So what we do in the lab, we get patient blood cells, we turn them into iPS cells and iPS stands for induced pluripotent stem cells and after once you have this stage, iPS stage, you can use this cells for making any uh, cell type of a body and what we do being at NEI we work on this layer that is at back of the eye it is retin retinal pigment epithelial monolayer this RP monolayer supports photoreceptors which are neural photosensitive cells and colloidal capillaries at the back of the eye together these three layers they maintain or help maintaining proper vision so what we what we um, our goal in our lab is to develop cell based therapies like I said earlier so what we have to to do and our approach is autologous based therapy let me tell you that so once you have that approach that means you are developing uh, you are making individual cells so that means you get you get patients for example you get patient patient a blood cells you make you make it on iPS cells and then you make it on RP cells so that means if you have 10 patients you're gonna have 10 uh, 10 lines to work with and you're gonna have making you're gonna have to make 10 different RP cells right if you have that kind of approach that is called autologous approach for that approach you have to have a process that is reproducible and efficient so to have that process of making RP cells from IPS cells we spend uh, multiple years to optimize that protocol and now we have a protocol that makes mature functional and pure RP cells so what we do what we basically did we did proof of concept studies in the lab and then we uh, we did uh, pre-animal model testing and then we transitioned this uh, protocol to the clinical manufacturing where our team uh, manufactures uh, clinical product. So currently what we are doing at NEI and this is the work uh, I was privileged to present today. Um, so we are at, we at NEI currently uh, have ongoing phase one to a clinical trial to test the safety of this uh, cell um, IPSRP product for dry AMD. Um, so we already have uh, transplanted one patient back in 2022 and this year we will have two more patients. We have got clinical manufacturing going on uh, for this year and in this meeting and this talk I was uh, I was sharing our lab's journey, how we managed to make this protocol, how we did a preclinical safety and efficacy study in the pig, animal, pig, pig model and then how we transitioned to the clinical manufacturing. So. Um, as you might know, a, uh, AMD or age-related macular degeneration is a multifactorial disease, and there is no such real animal model for that. And, and being a, and every animal model has its limits. So we, um, our main goal was to test first of all to develop the surgical. Um, steps that can be translate, uh, translated from animals to the humans. So we use pig eyes. Pig eye is very similar to human eye in, 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 in the size and the shape. So what we did, we, uh, we used this pig, pig animal model. We killed the RP cells by using the laser. And uh, what we tried to develop is we try to develop, recreate uh, this uh, late stage of dry AMD model in uh, dry AMD stage in pig eye. So that when we transplant this human IPS RP patch, we can actually test the safety and efficacy. Safety, I, I don't think we can we can test in the pig, but at least the efficacy. So uh, what we did, we transplanted um, this uh, IPS RP patch in the, in the pig eye, and then we did all kind of functional assays. You can actually, using all the techniques you have available for example the OCT it tells you about the structure integrity of the of the of the retinal layer so you can actually see the transplanted area how, how does the retina look like like uh, over the transplanted area and it's co as compared to the laser area and that laser area did not get the cells right so you can actually see those effects so we do, we that's the data I showed I showed when you have a transplanted patch I showed that 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 transplanted patch was able to uh, reorganize or restructure, maintain the structure integrity of retina. So you had a nice photoreceptor layer, you have inner an inner nuclear layer well well maintained, and you have outer nuclear layer well maintained too. But I, what I also showed, and which is which is very well recent and published data, unpublished data, is I I also showed that. When you have this IPSRP patch in the back of the big eye, this it also helps to regenerate the capillaries at the back or uh, uh, underneath it. Like as like what happens in geographic atrophy, because of RP is dysfunctional, it 
affects photoreceptor and it also affects the choroidal capillaries. So the iPSRP patch we are transplanting in the in the pig, it showed that it also not only it was able to save the retina structure, but it was also able to revive the capillaries. So I think in a way. Um, this model helped us to uh, uh, show this clinical product is actually very efficacious. And like I said, we, ha we had transplanted one patient in 2022. Now we have two more manufacturing ongoing. And uh, we hope that uh, soon in two or three years, we will be able to sh share the data uh, with the public. And um, another thing we are doing, we aim to um, transplant 15 patients. And we're also working uh, very closely with John Hopkins University. We want to start a new surgical site at, uh, at JHU because our surgeons are also from John Hopkins. And we hope that will accelerate the process and we will have more, um, more surgeries done you know, simultaneously at two different sites. That work is ongoing, but we are very much excited and looking forward to two patients that we are currently manufacturing. And we hope we will have two more surgeries by the end of this year. How long does it take to manufacture the IPSC and RPE cells? So that's, that's the biggest challenge. When you are working with a autologous approach, and specifically something which is the process which is developmentally guided, for us it takes six months, starting from getting the patient blood, getting to the uh, clinical product uh, on a patch, it takes us a good uh, six months to do that. Can you explain the RPE scaffold and how it works as an implant? Uh, so um, that's a good point. So we, uh, we are using um, biodegradable scaffold and we had a rational to use those scaffold because what we wanted to do, first of all, we wanted to, um, so there, there are a couple of things. Let me, let me just uh, take a step back. Uh, RPE in the back of thigh works as a monolayer. So you, if you want to have some functional tissue, if you want to transplant something, you would want that tissue to work right away, right? And to do that, you would want that tissue to be in its in vivo state. So we, uh, we, so we, what, when we put our cells on the scaffold, first of all, this scaffold is biodegradable because we don't want to leave anything behind once you transplant it, right? Second of second, second of all, because it's a scaffold and the nature of the scaffold, it helps to create a Brooks-like membrane or ECM protein um, uh, secreted by RP on the on these scaffolds. So we, um, in our rat st uh, studies that we, uh, the paper we published in 2019, we showed that this, uh, uh, this implant was uh, integrating well in the back of the rat eye, and we also show that data in the peg. So we believe that because the way we are manufacturing this product on the scaffold, it is helping not only to secrete those brooks like membrane proteins, but, but it also is helping to integrate with the, with the host uh, RP tissue. You mentioned you are hoping to implant 15 more patients. Do you have open enrollment for this trial? It's still an open enrollment. You can go to the clinicaltrials.gov site, of, obviously, and you can go to NEI website. Uh, they have uh, information on the on this trial, um, and I think NEI also works with the with the closer clinics also, and and um, to share more information. Is there anything you'd like to close with? Well, uh, I I would like to uh, end with this. I mean, is is it has been a humbling journey, doing. Uh, Going for some, um, going for some kind of this therapy, which is uh, so patient specific and which is which is targeting the la the late stage of the disease, it takes it takes a lot of effort. You want to make sure that the product you're going to put in it is it is functional and is safe. So I think we um, we in with all the work we have done and the IND approved we got from the we are very confident we know that its product is safe. We're just very eager to finish this uh, this phase one two a uh, trial at NEI and we we are hoping that soon we and other thing I would want to say we already are collaborating with very um, pharma um, collaborators or from uh, our colleagues and we hope that um, once this phase one two a is, is finished we can we can work towards the com commercialization of this uh, this product which any or any any academic uh, in uh, institute cannot do alone you have to have uh, you know your industry partners so we are already working with them yeah we hope to see uh, this therapy reaching to the patients at least in the next few few years or so but yeah